Oh, hey guys. <laughs> hey, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Hey, I'm testing this Class A amp that I built for my friend. I got it back for him. I got to do a couple of tweaks. I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do in another video. But look at this. I thought this is a great time. And you know what? It's 15 degrees C in my lab. <laughs> and uh, what is that? And if you ask, 59 degrees. <laughs> it's cold in my lab. But sitting next to this Class A amp, I'm pretty toasty. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting like 52 degrees on this thing. So that's just sitting here. Well, it's a little warmer than that, actually. 54. And, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of going around this thing. 51. I'll bring you over. I just thought this would be a great time to review this little Eric Hill infrared thermometer. You know, I reviewed one of the anemometers, you know, where you can read the airspeed and stuff like that. And, gosh, where is that thing? That thing's been really handy, and I think I got it in my little tool bag over there. But I've been carrying that around, actually, because it's been really handy. It's not, yeah, it's kind of funny once you have one, how, how many uses you can find for it. But, yeah, I'll show you this. It comes with a nice little manual. And this thing actually came with a pretty cool little holster. So, puts on your belt. And yeah, carry around on your belt and this little holster thing. But I'm using a Tesla's Class A amp. So I think I'll bring the camera over and show you how slick this is. I've shown you uh, my thermal camera, right? Where is that? Here it is. Yeah, showing you this guy, right? This guy's, I don't know, 400 bucks or something like that. It's kind of expensive. This thing is really inexpensive. Eric Hill Rook. ROOK 600 SP. Yeah, I'll bring you over and show you this thing. Uh, there's a little picture on the side because there's an angle, field of view. Um, simple to use. I mean, yeah, this is this is fun. Uh, and it's quick. So, you know, when you're testing something, you just grab it and you can just start, you know, looking at temperatures. You know, you can pull down those thermocouples. I got a bunch of them hanging over here. Uh, you know, when you're thinking ahead, you can get a few meters hooked up and put them in a few different spots and kind of watch the temperatures as you're rising things. But this is a really fast way to get down and look at different things and see the heat. And they're, I think they're pretty darn accurate as far as I can tell. So uh, I've used, and sometimes when I've tested, I've had my thermal camera, I've had the little thermocouples, and I've used one of these, and I even have a little touch meter uh, where that's not real handy. <laughs> but anyway, I've used various things just kind of compare just to see accuracy. And I find them all pretty accurate. I mean, accurate enough, you know. So, um, yeah, let's bring the camera over and I'll show you this thing. All right, guys. Uh, first, I thought I'd show you the box, you know, pretty simple box. There's the model number right there. And here's the manual. Let me pull that out there. So yeah, the manuals, it, it's a nice manual. You know, it's, I actually haven't hardly even looked at it because this thing's so easy to use. This kind of shows the, you know, the field of view. Okay, has these little circles here. I'll show you that here in just a moment. And yeah, I mean, here's a mistivity. So when I'm shining on metal like this, I could get some reflection, so it might not be super accurate, you know, when I'm when you're doing that. So you can set up the mistivity, and it has different languages, so that the reflections don't uh, give you, you know, wrong readings. But black electrician's tape will help too. But here's the angle, kind of gives you the distance here. So where you get one inch here, you need 12, so it's like one foot gives you one inch, okay? And there's the model numbers there. Now here's this, as soon as you pull the trigger, it lights right up, okay? And so then, in the display, you have these modes, but look at this, you got Celsius, you turn it, you get Fahrenheit. So, pretty cool, huh? When you, when you uh, turn this guy on and off, you get the infrared light. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. 
you still get the temperature. The infrared light just kind of helps you aim. See the light there? Okay, and then the mode. You got max, min, and I guess I need reading manual for AT and EMS. And there's calibration. But I've just been walking around and using it like this, just in scan mode. Okay, now here, let me carefully take this lid off. Because this thing's been running for a little bit. So he's pretty warm. So check this out. I'll shine on those aluminum caps. Eh, they're 40C, so that's not too bad. But over here on the card, see the Class A amp? One side's here, one side's here. It's sitting on a heat spreader down here. Then that heat spreader is connected to this heat sink. And if I try to get down there on those transistors, see the temperatures? If I just move this around, I can hit some hot spots. Now, these guys right here, they're setting up the drive. And those little heat sinks are pretty darn hot. Look at that, 72 degrees. So, and you can experiment moving in, moving out, moving around, but you know, it gives you an idea of your temperatures. Those aluminum caps there, they're a little bit better, 52. Then I've got this IC over here, and he's running pretty warm too. Uh, that's an op amp that's driving the circuit here, and yeah, that stuff's pretty hot right there too. So. I'm almost tempted to put uh, some kind of fan like right here on the lid. So when you put the lid down, it just kind of blows air around. So I might even try that. But when you get something like this, see, if I go to these uh, input circuit, the input filter, that's running pretty cool. Down here's some thermistors. Let me see what they're going to, yeah. If I'm hitting them, okay, right about... Oh, look at that. I got 100C. Every once in a while, I get up to 100C. There's a thermistor down there. There it is. Oh, 107C. I'll bet that thing's hot. Now, he's just kind of out there in the breeze, so he doesn't have anything around him. So, uh, nothing to cool him or anything like that. But yeah, he is hot. And the rectifiers are down here, the bridge rectifiers. They're on a heat sink down the bottom, so they're staying a bit cooler. But yeah, you can see how hot these Class A amps get. This guy's been driven pretty hard, but sounds great. It's just running pretty hot. So there you go. I'll put the price down below. These things are really inexpensive. I want to say they're uh, less than $20 US, but I'll, get, I'll let you know in just a moment. All right, guys. So what I want to do is just show you how you uh, aim or you know, or what you can read. So at six inches away, you get a half inch diameter, okay? 12 inches, one inch, 24 inches, two inch, and so on, 48 inches, four inch, okay? So that's that's kind of how uh, the radius of this thing fits, and you can use the laser pointer, you know, the little red dot, to point at your subject, okay? So that's how that works. The other thing is this material, the mistivity. So the radiation off of different materials like aluminum versus frozen food is gonna be different. You're gonna get some uh, light bouncing off of aluminum and you're gonna get less off of say ice. So you can punch in these mistivity numbers See, here's iron over here. You can punch in these numbers so you can get a better accurate number, okay? So then it'll know how much heat thermal imaging, how much thermal information it's getting back from that surface depending on what type of material it is, right? Makes sense, right? Okay, let me just kind of show you the meter itself. First of all, what's really neat is when you hold it down, it takes reading. And when you let go, it freezes it. So it's really nice that way. And it tells you that it's scanning, right? Then you hit the mode, 
it goes to max okay I let go and then it goes to min and then this AT that's the temperature that's your ambient temperature okay that's what the temperature is in my lab so it's pretty chilly it's a good thing I have this class A amplifier to heat me up <laughs> all right so then I go let's go through modes again and EMS emissivity and then you can use these buttons here to change it to get the number you need here okay to get more accurate readings honestly I'm kind of lazy and I'll leave this number where it is and I'll just point around and if I know I'm pointing at something metal like this I'll put a piece of tape like even capped on tape will help but you know black electrician's tape is really um, especially that black cloth stuff that works great but uh, just any kind of tape that doesn't have a shiny surface Kapton still has a shiny surface but especially when you got two layers that, that'll help um, I don't have that there by the way for taking temperature that goes on the inside the box I put that there so just in case anything was to touch it so okay let me show you something else Okay, AT, and then there's the EMS, the mistivity, right? And then here's calibration. See, it's on zero. If it wasn't, you can move these things around to zero it in, all right? So just wanted to show you all the setups because there's not a lot, and it's really easy to pick this up and start playing around with it and kind of see. And then also, see that thing right there? That turns on the red light. See that? So if you push this, it turns that off just in case you don't want that on, okay? So there you go. So hey guys, uh, using something like this, a lot less expensive than a thermal camera, right? And it's quick and accurate. You can point it around. They claim the accuracy of this thing is like really great. Uh, like, you know, one and a half degrees or something like that. Um, so I don't know, but I like to use these things. They're really quick and easy to use. And I feel like they're accurate enough to catch things. And especially when you're looking at a print circuit board and you're heating it up, you can go around and check parts. So, yeah, six inches away, half inch. So you get a half inch circle on your board. That's pretty good. So, and it comes with this if you're doing stuff in the field with it. But, yeah, uh, it's good for your uh, turkey, too. <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming up. So, happy Thanksgiving to all you Americans. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, oh, by the way, if you want to use the link down below, I appreciate it. Uh, I think they go for like almost $30 uh, wholesale or standard price. But I see uh, sale prices around $24, $25. So, yeah, not too bad. I mean, compared to 400 bucks for a camera, right? So, there you go. Hey, two thumbs up to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot. And Thanksgiving is coming up. So hopefully everybody's going to have a great holiday weekend or whatever. And I'm going to try. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. I might surprise everybody this holiday. We'll see. Um, but, all right, guys. I guess that's it. Uh, like the video if this was any use to you. Um, that really helps the YouTube uh, analytics and stuff. Helps the channel for free. Become a patron if you want. Uh, hit the thank you button down below. Do anything you want. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time.